So I've just had my new Solex power system installed. I've got the Solex Hybrid X1 inverter and I've got the triple power 4.5 kilowatt battery and just the normal things that go with your solar power installation. Um, now the reason I'm making this video, and I'll apologise for the video straight away because it's not a big slick video, it's just a crap video is that I wanted to tell you how to get the data out of this inverter straight into your node red. The inverter does come, well it doesn't come, it's an optional extra, the dongle. If you use the dongle it just puts the data up to the Solex cloud site where you can see all of your data of course but it only gets updated every five minutes and that is not what I would call real time. With the way I've now got it set up the data goes from that dongle into your node red and from instantly every 10 seconds or less probably if you want it into your node red and then you can start making decisions on what you're going to do with it like if the battery is 95% full and I'm generating a thousand well, thousand watts then turn on the hot water heater. So I wanted to be able to get my data um, straight out of my inverter into node red and I couldn't find anything on the internet to do it. Now I'm not an expert by any means but I've got quite a bit of um, IOT stuff in my house. Um, it's mainly all Tasmoto, it's Sonoffs and ESPs with Tasmoto on it and uh, I've got about 45 devices at the moment in my house which I'm collecting data from. So you know I really wanted to be able to get some data out of my inverter and I couldn't find any way of anywhere that anybody had documented it so far with this inverter. Now it didn't seem to be too difficult to do. So this is what I started off with. Um, all we've got is a in um, a function that no sorry not a function an HTTP request node doing a post, and the post is to 5.8.8.8, which is the dongle on the inverter, and the post is um, is is well to get that post I had to. Um, capture the data. So what I did was I just run up their app, their Solar Cloud app in local mode in an Android emulator on my PC and then use Wireshark to capture the data and from that I was able to see this post request. When that post gets sent off it comes back with all the data you need. So um, I'm just going to inject the timestamp and you will see over on the right hand side we've now got the output the message payload output and in here is all the data we require so god that, that was so easy to get i'm surprised no one's doing it yet well maybe i'm totally wrong maybe people are doing it now okay so then i thought well all i've got to do this actually comes out as a, a json um object now then a lot of work has been done over on one of the uh, home assistant sites to map all this data to um, what it actually means on the uh, inverter. Like the first one here, zero, is, is the current from PV1, the second one is current from PV2. And uh, it was very laborious, but someone's done all that work for me. So if we now go back to the um, full display, all I did was get this real time this HTTP request going. I feed it into this flow and um, the flow outputs loads of uh, graphs and um, uh, meters and the flow looks like this. So that is great for me you know I'm now getting all the real time data out of my inverter and this should this this should just work for you straight out of the box. Um, I will put the flow on a link below. Uh, now there is one other thing that's very important to do here. I'm running my Node Red on a Raspberry Pi. In fact, I've got two Raspberry Pis. One is my kind of working system with all my um, working parts of IoT in it. Uh, 
this is some of it here so um, this is my working system you can see the main supply in watts and um, how many watts I've used each day that type of thing I've got quite a few things on here so I've got a garden temperature and I've got um, house water temperature in the loft anyway sorry I diverge a bit because we are talking about this display here now then for this to work it's very important for your Raspberry Pi to have both interfaces connected up you need to have your Ethernet interface connected to the uh, your local network and you have to have the Wi-Fi interface connected to the hotspot that the dongle generates when you plug it in on your phone go to your Wi-Fi networks turn have a look at the Wi-Fi networks and you'll see the uh, the network that is created by the Solex hybrid inverter with the dongle I think it's also written on the dongle so once you've got those that connected you can then um, ping the IP address of your inverter so I've just bought out a command box 5.8.8.8 now you'll see it's responding to a ping now as you know 5.8.8.8 is a routable IP address on the internet so before even before you've connected your Pi up you will be able to um, ping that IP address but you've got to make sure your Pi is actually talking to the inverter IP address um, that is not difficult to do the way I did it was just to go onto the Pi and do a ping from my Pi it's responding to the ping I then just shut down my broadband the interface on the router so the broadband no longer was connected and make sure that ping continues that way you'll know that you are actually pinging the Wi-Fi dongle okay I think that's probably all I need to tell you to get this working uh, you know uh, to me it seems a really good way of doing it and now of course I can get um, the data into my node red and I'll be able to draw graphs if I want to so here's a graph of my PV1 and PV2 output so I've got a eight eight panels and ten panels one south and one southwest um, here's the battery state of charge I don't, if anybody else has got one of these solar hybrid inverters I find those the battery state of charge when it gets to 80 percent it doesn't charge very quickly it's absolute rubbish if you ask me it should be charging a lot more than 0.1 of an amp charges at 20 amps up to 80 percent then drops down to 0.1 of an amp I have asked um, Solax technical support about this but they haven't got back to me yet um, yeah so once you've got all this data gained your node red you can then say things like um, well if the state of charge is greater than 80 percent and where the uh, solar panels are generating say a kilowatt then turn on a fire somewhere turn on an electric heater using Tasmoto send out an MQTT request turn on an electric heater or turn on your immersion heater you don't really want to be feeding it back into the grid where you only get 5p a kilowatt hour and um, they are actually charging you 15p 15-16p a kilowatt hour okay just to finish off another shot of my installation it all seems to be working well apart from this battery not charging above 80 percent which is a nuisance i hope i didn't ramble on too much <clears throat> towards the end of that video and i hope you get some useful information out of it and you start monitoring your solax x1 hybrid <clears throat> locally like i'm doing it is a lot better of course you need to have had node red set up know a bit about node red you need to have your pi set up know a bit of pi but um it's all on on youtube how to do all that stuff and um thanks for listening and if you've got any comments or you know about that battery problem please let me know i'll put the um link to my flow down below and also the um the string that goes in the post request thanks bye and last thing i must just say this flow that um, I've linked down below is 99% um, somebody else's work. I got it from this site, the um, Q 
community.homeassistant site and there's loads of good stuff on there but as I say most of the flowers come off of there. Thanks for listening, bye!